my name is Klaus Ellenberg. Uh, I'm originally from Sweden. I spent the last seven to ten years traveling and most of the time in New Zealand where I bought the property and now I moved over to here and I'm now looking for work here. I'm 38 years old and uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. <laughs> How did you hear about Biddy for the first time? Uh, I was woofing in Australia, that's like uh, working on organic farms, working for room and board, a way to travel without spending a lot of money and also to meet people. So I was doing that in Australia and in the woofing book there was one place that stood out for me it was like self-development and something with teachings from extraterrestrials or something and I was into finding self-development techniques and meditation techniques so I looked this guy up and went to work for him for a week or something and he had Wendell Stevens translations told me about Billy and I had interest and I read those um, the first book of Wendell Stevens and it just blew my mind all the scientific information and the and the sort of the things that made much more sense than anything I'd seen in the new age before that because I was looking for ways to control my thoughts learn meditation and uh, yeah I ended up spending two months there studying all the material that he had anyway and discussing it with him and uh, I came home to New Zealand after that, looked it up on the internet and found that the spiritual text, the things about self-development, how the universe works, just made enormous sense. So just went from there, studying the internet and the Figu site on the internet, comparing it with all other things that, I'd, that I was still into at the time. Were you more fascinated by the UFO <coughs> information or more fascinated by the teachings or...? Yeah, the UFO part of it put me off to start start with the first time I heard about it. Um, because the first impression many people get information is about self-development and uh, taking responsibility for your own actions, thoughts and feelings and, and actually becoming <laughs> a better human being and learning about how life works, how thought works and uh, all those things. And that's what really makes life... Uh, worth worth uh, for whatever you say um, were you raised a Catholic or, or Protestant no, pr and how did that conflict with or was it a conflict for you um, in Sweden it's pretty non-religious so in my family I had to go to church at ch Easter and at Christmas every year and I didn't like it and I did the confirmation at 13 and that was mainly just out of tradition because everybody else did it at the time and I was an orderly young person <laughs> so who does uh, yeah so and after the confirmation I just realized yeah that's absolutely nothing for me it doesn't make sense and it was not until much later that I actually started searching for answers for the meaning of life and and things like that and you feel that you found the answers for the meaning of life mostly by through Billy's teachings? Yeah, definitely. It's the things that makes the more sense, most sense out of anything today in philosophy or um, yeah, religious teachings and philosophy. They, when you compare it to the Meyer context, it's it's like comparing a drop of water to the whole ocean. When you go into the Meyer context, you see it makes enormous sense and it goes into details about a lot of things that other teachings just scratch the surface and don't give any real definitions or explanations about. Here you get the full story, the full in-depth explanations about thoughts, universe, everything you can imagine. Anything that's ever been discussed in spirituality and self-development, almost every aspect of everything. There's very good logical explanations. And um, what is sort of the critique? You mentioned you can't wear a T-shirt with the peace sign on there, um, the exposure to the outside world. How have people reacted to you? Have they called you crazy? Have they called you... I don't know. No, in, in New Zealand it was quite... Um, I had a, a bumper sticker on my car about reincarnation. Don't worry about dying. Um, you'll live through it and make the world a better place to come back to. And Michael Horn came up with that, and I found it on the internet when he had written it, and I just found it was a great idea. And, and I saw people in the rear view mirror smiling and laughing and looking at my 
And that was all positive in New Zealand. But here, when you're looking for work, because they say like, the prophet is never accepted in his own land, in his own country. And that you see here, that there's a lot of prejudices against Billy and skepticism and think that he's just a UFO fanatic or something. And it's a lot more uh, religious here in Switzerland so you, and conservative. So when you look for work here, you have to be very neutral and don't show any signs of anything like this because you might not get a job because, because of this. So that's why I had to take my peace sticker off this off my laptop. And uh, I had one on the, on the case as well. I took that off as well. And I had a, uh, like, because I want to be able to show things on the computer. Here's what I've done before when I'm looking for work. And so I had to change the, oh, I, I've changed the back, the screen desktop. background on the my desktop. desktop as well, because I have pictures of, uh, yeah, one of the ones you can download from the Figure website with uh, Billy and a little bit of uh, a ray gun and yeah nature around here <laughs> so you have to be completely neutral and nothing at all like that and to get a job here it seems is there something in particular that fascinated you most about uh, the context or the teachings or the history that was taught by the players it it was the meditation book that uh, written by billy introduction to meditation that really blew my mind uh, i studied the teachings first a little bit just what was on the net in the american english language and I just read what was there. And at first, this, this text, uh, what's it called? Um, Semiosis 10 Contact, uh, Introduction to the Spiritual Teachings, was the first one that really grabbed my attention with life in general, but from a spiritual aspect, self-development aspect. And then I found that they had books that Billy had written, and I just felt I had to get a meditation book and I bought it and I started relearning German because it was so uh, excellent, this book. It just confirmed a lot of things that I had found on my own search through uh, the New Age teachings and uh, Eastern religions and things. It just, but I have found as answers in my own searching the confirmation I got from Billy's book, Introduction to Meditation. And that really inspired me to relearn German that I had studied five years in school, like 15 years earlier. And uh, yeah, to me, that's the, that's the breakthrough for me, that book. Um, are you uh, married? Do you have children? No, I'm single. So that gives me the possibility to travel and to explore the teachings, go to the source where they've come from and yeah, meet the people. So I've met many people who claim to be gurus or claim to be enlightened this or that way. And people in India who have just just ex exploiting people, just making money, uh, allowing others to raise them up as a leader or a guru or something in the Sorry first. Sorry to stop, but I think this airplane mm. is a terrible sound now. <coughs> it's there, it's just. Sorry, mm -hmm. we have to wait just a little bit. All right, yeah, the, that's your all right. talk is really good. I want, all, I want all of it. Yeah, maybe you can cut some pieces out of it or something. <laughs> <laughs> because, I don't know. Yeah, what we're going to cut out is your head. <laughs> Just see your pocket talking. Yeah, that's yeah, right. <laughs> X Y Z. Right. Yeah. Well, it's hard to hard to speak clearly and, and say all the right things. <laughs> no, you're doing great. I, I'm going to definitely use a lot of this here. Yeah. Can you um, tell us about again the, to how you you experienced sort of traveling through India, people yeah. exploiting this? Yeah. Well, I I heard uh, when I was first looked into the New Age teachings, I heard about all these teachers and gurus and people who claim to be enlightened or somehow more evolved than others. And I went to India to visit some ashrams and learn yoga. And I wanted to travel around to all the yoga ashrams. I ended up staying at only a few places where I spent more time. Uh, in Pune, for, for example, outside of uh, uh, Bombay. And there was a lot of... Uh, <coughs> Western teachers that had sort of uh, Because there's a big ashram there the Osho Rajneesh ashram there And I went there at first just because it was a meeting place. I had to meet up with a friend somewhere close to Bombay and we decided okay. I saw that in the book somewhere. Oh, that's an easy place to meet and He got there before me He'd already done some course in there or something and then he wanted to stay longer and we ended up never going on this uh, journey to all the yoga ashrams around India that I, that I had planned that I wanted to do um, but 
in Pune, I found out there was a lot of teachers that have were sort of trying to profit of all the people that visit, visited the Osho ashram. And they had set up their own little practices of, of teaching yoga or anything. Uh, many of these people were like uh, gurus. They claimed to be enlightened, claimed to be better in some way, more evolved. And I wanted to explore that. And I went to uh, listen to many of these people, what they were saying, asking them questions and things. And at first I was sort of sort of fooled by them a bit and but I was always skeptical and thinking can it be like this or could it be like that and this is long before I'd heard anything about Billy and the teachings from here and I found this time visiting and meeting all these people who claimed to be enlightened they were all contradicting each other and they all claimed that there was something like the Buddhist enlightenment where you're free free of all suffering and things like that and I tried to convince myself as well that that was a possibility even though it didn't really make sense to me because I wasn't at the time responsible enough to uh, want to accept what makes more sense because it's always easier to uh, grab some teachings and just say that this is what I want to be true I, I don't and then you try to convince yourself to try to brainwash yourself that this is how reality is but that's the hard thing with that's the thing about the teachings from here. It's no sugar-coated sweet talk that try to seduce you to tell you this is what you should believe in, this is what uh, would make you free. This is like take responsibility, drop the bullshit. It's your life, it's your choice. So, and it's hard to take those kind of things because people don't want to take responsibility for their own thoughts, feelings and actions. And we don't understand what thoughts, feelings and actions really are either. Or, I mean, at least not feelings. People don't know what feelings are. So they think it's something that comes from a god or something. When really it, we have created it to ourselves with our own thoughts. So people who want to take responsibility, they can benefit from these teachings here. But if you just want to be seduced by sh sugar, sugar-coated talk and nonsense and something to, or some entertainment for a while, then there's lots of teachings out there in the new age and religions that just profit from your ignorance pretty much the silent revolution of truth um, mm. how how is it going to really happen i mean people don't know about it it's silent a revolution to me it should be loud and crazy uh, i mean how mm. how are people going to relate to it most of the time i see old people here studying and uh, being interested in the teachings i mean how do you see the future for this well, unfortunately, change is very slow, <laughs> and that's what people don't want to accept in general. They want things to happen fast and quickly and, and without effort. But if you look at life, if you look at evolution, it's very slow. And unfortunately, the consciousness development is almost as slow as the development of do the body and species. And that's pretty sad when you <laughs> look at it like that. that People have to be ready for something before they can accept uh, or look into something deeper. So, yeah, it takes time. And because we've been lied to for such a long time by our governments, by people, by priests, uh, we're pretty uh, based in our views. So, it takes a long time to get rid of the bullshit of our that we've collected in our minds and mm -hmm. face the facts and see is there any proof that any of this is true or do we just want to believe in something or do we want to investigate um, what is your place in FIGU? are you a member? Um, do you belong? are you part of FIGU? do you do any work for FIGU? I'm a passive member since um, three years I think it is now and uh, I started uh, talking a little bit publicly in New Zealand before I left there I felt I wanted to move over here so I felt nothing to lose so I might as well go public about this a little bit in New Zealand just I decided once a month to give a talk or to show a DVD or something somewhere in some town so I did some of that in New Zealand and, and Michael Horn was like an inspirement for me uh, there and otherwise, 
I've helped here with work in the last two years. I came here two years ago and I felt I, I started sp studying the spirit lessons maybe three years ago. And when you read the spirit lessons, it felt for me like an invitation to come here and to get to know the people in, in the group, not, not just to meet Billy and to um, be, uh, be around him, but to actually get to know the people here. And I felt a week to come here would be too short. So I wrote a letter here and asked, can I come for about three months? And I decided to take time off work and go here and for three months. And um, they said, okay, but uh, then you have to probably stay in a tent and there's no shower and things like that. <laughs> And I said, oh, is there a, a well somewhere? I had heard that there's a well, so I thought, oh, okay, well, that's all right. I'll stay in a tent and I'll use the well to wash up and things. And uh, work, help with the work, like for, for room and board or something like that, for uh, work six hours a day and get one free meal. So I felt, all oh, right, that's a good, and then I have some time and I don't have to stress people about getting to know them and ask all the questions in a hurry and things. I have time to settle down and actually get to know the people. So I ended up spending two and a half months here the first summer, uh, helping Silvana with the daily works around the farm and uh, pruning trees, planting, going through the compost, anything. And then I, it just gave me so much to get to know the people here and to talk to Billy a bit. And so I came back the next summer again, which was last summer. And then I was starting to think about maybe I want to move over here because I'm still not sort of bound by relationship or anything in New Zealand. So that's why I decided to come here this year and to sell my property in New Zealand and move over here. Last question, um, anything you wish or you hope for the future, for our future here on Earth? Yeah, that we can live in peace on this planet some at some stage. Say that again, because we heard some... And I think it starts within everybody. Everybody has to create peace within themselves, work on themselves. And there's where meditation is such an important part, feels like one of the most important parts to actually create this inner peace within yourself. And yeah, it starts within every human being and then they spread it to their family and their society. And eventually the more people that work on that, the, there's a chance for peace in the world. <laughs>